Welcome to tonight's Bible class. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace giving thanks to you. Thank you for your many and wonderful blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come out and study another portion of your word, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins rather than by words, thoughts, and deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for everything you have done and thank you for everything that you continue to do. For this is our prayer in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And tonight's Bible class teacher. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to Bible study. Now we rise to give God glory and we still rise to give him praise for our great God is in fact worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. We thank the Lord for waking us up this morning and we thank the Lord for starting us on our way. Listen, it was no one but the Lord that carried us over last week's obstacles and hurdles, hindrances, hiccups. Here we are today starting out on a brand new week. There ought to be at least one witness online with me that can take a moment and testify that we serve an awesome God. Amen. The God we serve, there's no one else that can rival his throne. There's no one else that can divvy out his blessings. And there is no one else who can keep us, hold us, preserve us, and continue to give us faith that we need as we continue to live out our lives every single day. Listen, I am excited to be here and I pray that you are too. If you're visiting this channel, we want you to know that you are our honored guest and it's always a delight to have you come this way. If you'd be so kind, share this message with as many of your family and friends as you possibly can because there might be something said that will encourage their souls just like it's encouraging ours on today. We've learned here at South Union that as God blesses us, he expects for us to be a blessing to others as well. And now to my brothers and sisters, these superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ. Come on, you already know what time it is. Oh, how sweet it still is to be a child of the King. Now, if you have your Bibles, if you have your electronic devices, why don't you open up your Bible, navigate over, meet us or beat us, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Beginning with verse 9, you should find these powerful words. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will 
in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Family and friends, if you would take a moment, plug into the live chat right now. It's time for our spiritual blessing. Amen. It's time for our spiritual blessing. And then tonight's thought and theme, check your feeling. Check your feeling. Family, as we discuss what it means to check our feeling, my mind reflects all the way back to childhood. As a young boy growing up, I enjoyed sweet things. Do I have a witness online with me on tonight? Who's going to tell the truth? Who enjoys sweets? You enjoyed it then and you enjoy them right now. <laughs> Amen. I still enjoy some sweet delicacies from time to time. And uh, if we tell the truth in here, sometimes we may enjoy it a little too freely. But my mind reflects back to the feeling, that's the F-I-L-L-I-N-G, that produced the feeling, F-E-E-L-I-N-G, when I sank my teeth into sweet delicacies. I was impressed with what was on the inside. It wasn't so much the outside, it's what lived within. These sweet delicacies spoke to my taste buds and my whole attitude would improve. My spirit would lighten up, all because I got my hands on some of these sweet things. I enjoyed looking at them, but even much more, I enjoyed consuming them. Do I have a witness online? Someone enjoy a good honey bun? <laughs> I hear you. Someone says, how many sweets does the preacher have in this office? <laughs> well, this is for example, amen? For example, if I eat all of these, then my body's going to show it and my appetite will too. Listen, as we close out this lesson, I just want us to get the picture that what's on the inside is very, very important. As a matter of fact, ingredients are important. Ingredients and substances that come together to develop the product are extremely important to our lives. Whether we're talking about things, organizations, relationships, or people, ingredients are critically and vitally important to the overall success of the subject at hand. And so family, when the Lord looks at our lives, he wants us to be filled with the right things. He wants us to consume the right things. And then when we are pressed to the test, whatever's on the inside, that's what's coming out. So as I examine my walk with the Lord, I consider what lives on the inside. There are some important characteristics and attributes that must pepper the life of every child of God. We went on record when we spoke of checking our feeling that the scriptures speak explicitly that the Christian needs to be filled with the right things, filled with the spirit of God, filled with comfort from the Holy Spirit, filled with joy, filled with fruits of righteousness. And lastly on today, filled with the knowledge of his will. Now let's unpack this text together. The book of Colossians is written to first century Christians who are dealing with persecution in their day. As a matter of fact, Paul is writing unto them and he wants them to stay faithful, remain faithful, even when they are dealing with some stressful times. And that's an important nugget of information and encouragement for us, that we must remain faithful even in the midst 
of some stressful times. And so what he does, Paul opens up their understanding and he wants them to know that I'm praying for you, that you are filled with the right things that will enable you to stand in your day. I'm encouraged to see that he mentions we need to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Every child of God, every saint needs to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Now, when we speak of will, God has a will for all of our lives. What we must make sure of is that our will comes under his will. Let us not get carried away by our own ambitions, by our own desires, by our own aims of success, and forget that at the end of the day, it's about God saving our souls. So we pick up with verse 9 of Colossians 1, and the Bible reads, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be, here it is, filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, they are dealing with some adverse times and some difficult situations in their lives. But Paul gives them inspiration for their journey. And he wants them to know that you can be faithful when you're filled with the right things. The first thing that we have to realize, we must be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Now, someone may ask, what does that mean, Brother Preacher? Well, the knowledge of God's will means that we have a spiritual awareness about ourselves. We understand that our lives have not been given so that we can execute our own will, but rather the will of God who has provided life unto us all. It's right here in the text. Paul says, I'm praying for you, but I'm praying for you that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Watch it now. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, wisdom, James tells us about wisdom, and wisdom comes from God. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge. It's the ability to think through things from a spiritual level and not from a carnal perspective, amen? So it's about raising our understanding. It's about enlightening our perspective. It's about increasing our spiritual outlook. God wants all of his children, family, to be concerned with their spiritual walk. Now, the only way we can be concerned with how we look and how we behave ourselves, how we carry ourselves, how we walk, how we live spiritually, it takes wisdom. Amen? It takes wisdom. Now, wisdom allows us to see that we're not just living for this moment, that there's something important after this moment. Do we make decisions in our lives based on how we feel? Because if we do, we can be erratic and very impulsive. We're all over the place. We're, we're, we're kind of uh, chaotic in our thinking. But the wise person thinks about what they're going to do today, but then how is this decision going to affect the rest of my day into tomorrow, into next week, and possibly the rest of my life? I must be concerned with this. I must think through things and not just act out haphazardly. That requires wisdom. And Paul says, I'm praying that you get wisdom. And I'm praying that you have the understanding and the knowledge of God's will. And then he opens up just what the will of God is once we have become children of the king. It's right here in the text. In verse 10, that you might walk worthy 
underscore that, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So when we have the right spiritual understanding, we, we know that walking with the Lord is a process, amen? Uh, it's a marathon, it's a decathlon, it is not a sprint. God desires for us to grow and we should desire to grow in the knowledge of his will. Paul would indicate, he said, I want to know the Lord he speaks to the intimacy. I want to have an intimate, real, genuine, bona fide, verified relationship with the Lord. And I've learned, family, that uh, sometimes we grow closer to the Lord when we are going through great trials and tribulations. There ought to be a witness out there with me on tonight. Who can identify with that? Who thought they knew the Lord and then the Lord allowed them to go through some things some difficult days, some dark days, and then you find out that I'm really beginning to grow in my spiritual walk with the Lord because of what I'm going through. I have to learn to depend on him. I have to learn that I may not always have the answers right at my fingertips, but I am in touch and in tune with the one who can make all things work out for the good. And so I need to be filled with the spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding, and the knowledge of his will. Look at the text, increasing in the knowledge of God. So the Lord does not wish for us to stay stagnant and stuck at potential. If I come to Christ, uh, and I've been, to, been in Christ for many years, I'm supposed to grow in the Lord, amen? I'm supposed to grow deeper in my faith. I'm supposed to grow deeper in my understanding. And that is the prayer that the apostle lays to the uh, early saints. And this same prayer applies to our lives even right now. The text goes on to read, verse 11, strengthen with all might, underscore that, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. So I need to possess strength, but it's strength according to God's glorious power. I need patience. I need long suffering, but I need joyfulness as well. Listen to this. Because of the situations that will come to me in my lifetime, I need to be strong, but I have to be strong in my faith that God will open a door, that God will make a way, that God will sustain me even as I bear the burden of my day. And then I need some patience. Come on, someone. I need to be filled with patience. Let's tell the truth about it on today. Listen, so many times we live our lives impatiently. Amen. And when we grow impatient, that's when mistakes are made. That's when errors are made. That's when we make blunders and we make poor choices and decisions because we have grown impatient. I need patience. I need the ability to sit and to pray on whatever it is I'm going through, whatever the relationship might be. Pray about the situation. Don't just act out. Check my feeling. Maybe situations have deteriorated in my life because of poor decisions I've made. Maybe it's not my neighbor. Maybe it's me. Perhaps I need to learn how to be long suffering. Come on, somebody. Talk to me in here. To be able to deal with the pressures of life. But I like the text because as we deal with the pressures of life, as we exert patience and long suffering and, and faithfulness, look at the text. Don't leave out your joy. <laughs> Have patience, 
but don't wait impatiently and then claim to have patience. When we're patient, the disposition of our walk should never change. Yes, we want things to open up for us. Yes, we want to get out from under this burden. Yes, we want the Lord to just take us from where we are to where he wants us to be without going through the ups and downs of life. But maybe it's a process that I have to develop patience. I must learn to be long suffering. And even in all of this, God doesn't want me to lose my joy. <laughs> Listen, when we know that God has been good to us, family, we really don't have to lose our joy. We go through our tough times, but we go through it knowing that God's going to make a way. We say to ourselves, listen, I don't know how God's going to do it, but I know God can, and I trust that he will. So I'm going to allow my disposition. I'm going to control my disposition. I'm not going to grow angry. I'm not going to lash out. I'm not going to grow bitter. Listen, don't allow situations that have not changed when you or when I want them to, we cannot allow those situations to make us grow bitter on the inside. Amen. Allow it to make us better. You've got it. So as we close this study, I want to ask you a question. What is it that you're going through what is it that you're experiencing right now that is causing you to grow closer with the Lord? You didn't want to go through this ordeal. You weren't looking for it. You didn't sign up for it. But you know that God is still with you. And because he's still with you, you can have joy on the inside. Even when you're going through your journey on the outside. Oh, family, when we are filled with the right things, in times of distress and in times of pressure, the right things are going to come out. As you walk with the Lord this week, make sure you're feasting on the right things and allow God's peace, God's comfort, God's joy to guard you and to protect your peace, even in the time of storm. Check your feeling. And when we check our feelings, it allows us to feel even better when we've been feasting on the right things. Amen? Amen and praise God. Listen, we thank you for tuning in here with us on tonight. Pray that this study has blessed your soul and as you start out on another week, always remember uh, that right here at South Union, hey, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord and uh, God will continue to order your steps. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Have a good week. Take care and God bless. Oh yes, your word. Oh Lord, your holy, your holy name. Oh Lord, your holy, holy is your, holy is your name. You are worthy, Lord. So worthy. I know I'm not I am not worthy of your grace. Can we sing it again? You are holy. So holy, Lord, Lord
so worthy of your grace. I'm not worthy of your grace, no. Can we say that you are?